Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw just sitting here in my car um, waiting for basically myself to get done running some errands. I'm working up some motivation to go into the bank because I don't want to because uh, I hate the bank. <laughs> so I was just sitting here listening to my audiobook, Strange the Dreamer, which I'm listening to in preparation for getting to the sequel, Muse of Nightmares, when I realized that I hadn't filmed this week. Like, or, well, I have put up a video this week, but I've not filmed a fresh video this week. So I thought that we should go ahead and do a Friday Reads because I just got done at the library. So like, what better time? I had three things on hold and I picked up one thing from the brow shelves. The thing I picked up from the brow shelves is Trust Exercise, a novel by, Stu a novel by Susan Choi. Um, forgive any stumblings. This video is going to go up just like straight and edited probably while I'm in the bank because I hate the bank. Um, but this basically got me because the inside flap says it's about a pair of teenagers who fall in love at like a performing arts magnet academy and the professor who gets maybe like overly invested in their relationship. Those are so many things that I love so much. I love books about pretentious, precocious, um, private school kids, especially when it's like a performing arts space setting. I'm thinking a lot of Meg Wallitzer's The Interestings, which is like a performing arts camp, not a performing arts school, but like same difference. I'm very, very excited to get to this. It's very literary. Uh, I didn't realize because I just read the flap and I didn't actually read any of the book because I don't know, I'm bad at libraries. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit more literary in style than what I usually pick up. So I'm hoping that doesn't bite me in the ass. And then the books that I had on hold, I had a middle grade book, which I'm going to, let me, I'm going to one-handedly take the hold stickers off these so that you guys don't see any of my info and so that you can see the beautiful covers. This is Orange for the Sunsets by, let's see. You're getting this live and unscripted, friends, doing it one handed. Tina Athidi. Wow. Sorry guys. That took a lot longer than I thought it would. According to the inside flap, Asha and her best friend Yosef never cared about the differences between them. Indian, African, girl, boy, short, tall. But when Ugandan president Idi Amin announces that Indians have 90 days to leave the country, suddenly those differences are the only things that people in Entebbe can see. Not the shared after school samosas or Asha clearing for Yosufu at every cricket game. Determined for her life to stay the same, Asha clings to her world tighter than ever before. But Yosufu is torn, pulled between his friends, his family, and a promise that could bring his dream, a promise that could bring his dreams of university within reach. Now, as neighbors leave and soldiers line the streets, the two friends find that nothing seems sure, not even their friendship. And with only days before the deadline, Asha and Yasufu must decide if the bravest thing of all might be to let each other go. So I am always here for middle grade that's tackling um, real life historical events or real life historical happenings. Um, I think that middle grade and young adult are doing a really, really interesting thing, exploring and providing spaces to explore race and tragedy and gender in a way that adult novels aren't doing these days. And this cover is gorgeous. I saw this one on, um, the new book release from Book Riot, their new release index, and literally the cover just caught me so off guard that I knew I had to put it on hold. And then, so up next after that, we have a good old-fashioned space opera. I'm assuming this one is one that you guys have probably seen, like, floating around a little more readily. Come on, sticker. There we go. They're supposed to, like, fold down the corners so that you can make it easier to get them off, but the library doesn't always do that. So there we go. Uh, this is a memory called Empire by Arcadia Martine. If you have not seen this floating around, um, Ambassador Maha Dismarade travels to the capital of the interstellar Texelani Empire, eager to, take, eager to take up her new post. She arrives not only to discover that her predecessor has died and no one will admit that his death wasn't accidental or that Mahit might be next. Now Mahit must discover who is behind the murder, rescue herself, and save her small but fiercely independent mining station from Tiklon's unceasing expansion, all while navigating an alien culture that is all too seductive, engaging in intrigues of her own, and hiding a deadly technological secret, one that might spell the end of her station and her way of life, or rescue it from annihilation. Uh, as you can see, it's burbed on the front cover by Anne Leckie, being an absolute, uh, like, 
a space opera that she absolutely loved. So if Anne Leckie, current queen of space operas, is telling you that it's a good space opera, it's definitely worth picking up. I know a couple of people who have read this and given it really, really solid reviews. I really like this cover. And it's been a while since I've dug into just like some good old-fashioned SF space opera. So I have very high hopes for this one. And then lastly, the book that I am perhaps like most excited about, it's a nonfiction book. It is by an author that I've read before, and oh, sorry guys, I hope that focus has not been doing that this whole time. Um, it's by an author whose book I've read before, and I absolutely lost my mind over her first one. So the minute I saw that she had a second one coming out, and with her daughter, I knew that I had to go and put it on hold. This is Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle by Emily Nagoski. Emily Nagoski also wrote Come As You Are, which is an absolutely amazing book about female sexuality and the female orgasm and the myths that we have surrounding the female orgasm. I love the way that Emily Nagoski writes, just like in general. She does pop science really, really well. And I'm so glad for this book. I've had my eye on this book since I heard that it was going to come out. It's The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle. Um, anybody who is self-employed, freelancing, works from home, is trying to balance an IRL job with like a creative passion pursuit, knows the feeling of burnout and stress and managing all of those things. So I am very, very excited to see exactly how this one specifically turns out uh, and what Emily has to say and what there's to learn about the stress cycle. So yeah, I'm very excited for all of my books. Those are all my library holds. Let me know what you guys are reading on this fantastic Friday. And uh, until next time, friends, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading. Bye.